Welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into a hot topic. Is the government lying to you? The real question is, how bad is diesel exhaust for the environment? The answer may surprise you. Spoiler alert. The fact is that modern diesel truck exhaust is actually pretty clean. Stick around to find out why. The evolution of diesel engines, exhaust systems have come a long way from just to exhaust pipe. Thanks to advanced exhaust after treatment systems, Today's diesel trucks are cleaner than ever before, but what exactly are these systems? Why are they so important? How do they work and what exactly is it that they do? What are the components and the tasks they accomplish? The chemical reactions that take place, what do they achieve? How does the DPF and SCR systems work and what is diesel exhaust fluid? These are some of the questions we are about to answer. Modern diesel trucks are equipped with four key exhaust components that make the difference between black, soot-filled exhaust to clean, clear exhaust. The Exhaust Gas Recirculation System, EGR, the Diesel Oxidation Catalyst, DOC, the Diesel Particulate Filter, DPF, and the Selective Catalytic Reduction System, SCR, which uses diesel exhaust fluid, DEF. These are the technologies that work together to significantly reduce harmful emissions. How do these systems work and how do they reduce the amount of greenhouse gases, hydrocarbons, particulate matter and other harmful emissions? Let's break it down. We will start by diving into the invisible dangers hiding in exhaust gases, the harmful emissions we can't see but need to understand. We have one of the first and most primitive after-treatment system, the Exhaust Gas Recirculation System, EGR. It is horrible for your engine, but helps reduce nitrogen oxide. NOx. The EGR system is bad for your engine because it introduces exhaust gases back into the intake to be burnt twice. This reduces the NOx emissions slightly, but also creates soot buildup inside the engine intake, the valves and pistons. This soot buildup can lead to all sorts of issues with the engine. This is the cause of the controversial argument between environmentalist and engine enthusiasts. Is the EGR system worth having? Unfortunately, the EGR system is bad for the engine, but good for the environment. The EGR system reduces up to 30% of the NOx emissions. Similar to the EGR system, the newer SCR system reduces NOx 90% as well, making the EGR redundant and out of date. Hopefully one day the SCR system will be efficient enough to meet the emission standards without the use of the EGR. Emissions regulations are getting ever more difficult to meet. Currently, both systems are now needed to make near zero NOx by the time it comes out of the exhaust pipe. Next, we have the Diesel Oxidation Catalyst, DOC. The science behind it. How does it work? Let's get down to the chemistry of the process at a molecular scale. Are you ready? Let's get into it. The DOC is typically the first component in the after-treatment exhaust system. The purpose of the DOC is to reduce harmful hydrocarbons, HC, and carbon monoxide, CO, in the exhaust by oxidizing them into water, H2O, and carbon dioxide, CO2. This component also helps reduce the harsh odors associated with diesel engine exhaust. The DOC relies on precious metals like platinum, palladium, and sometimes rhodium to help drive the oxidation reactions that convert harmful carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons into harmless carbon dioxide and water. These metals act as catalysts, facilitating the chemical reaction without being consumed, allowing the system to continuously reduce emissions and keep the exhaust clean. Here's where it gets interesting. How do the SCR and DOC work together? This process is incredibly interesting and effective. The DOC not only reduces harmful hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide, but also plays a vital role in preparing the exhaust for the next stage. The SCR system. By allowing for the exhaust temperature to raise and reducing some pollutants, the DOC creates the ideal condition for the SCR system to function.
Essentially, the DOC provides a place where diesel exhaust fluid, DEF, can react with harmful nitrogen oxide, NOx, converting them into harmless nitrogen and water. Let's dive deeper into how the SCR system and diesel exhaust fluid work together to tackle NOx emissions. As the exhaust passes through these systems, harmful molecules are transformed. The DOC converts CO and hydrocarbons, the SCR reduces NOx into harmless gases, and the DPF catches all the particulate matter, and it is incinerated during an after-treatment exhaust DPF regeneration. In the end, what comes out of the tailpipe is primarily nitrogen and water vapor. Selective Catalytic Reduction, SCR, uses diesel exhaust fluid, DEF, and reduces harmful NOx emissions from the exhaust. The Selective Catalytic Reduction System, SCR system, injects diesel exhaust fluid, DEF, 32.5% urea and 67.5% dionized water into the exhaust stream. A chemical reaction is achieved over the catalyst converting nitrogen oxides, NOx, into harmless nitrogen and water vapor. You can see the process in the animation. It is actually quite amazing. Let us know in the comments. Now that we have the SCR system, do we still need the EGR? Next, we need to filter out all the black soot. The DPF will take care of the thick black exhaust smoke you remember from diesel trucks from the past. The diesel particulate filter, DPF, captures and filters out soot and particulate matter, preventing it from entering the atmosphere. The DPF removes particulate matter, a substance also known as soot. To clean itself, the DPF undergoes a process called an exhaust regeneration. During this process, soot is incinerated into ash, with temperatures elevated to as high as 1200 Fahrenheit, 650 Celsius, about three to four times the normal operating temperature of the exhaust system. DPF regenerations can be passively, forced, or automatically activated. A forced regeneration is triggered by the operator or technician. An automatically activated regen is triggered by the engine ECU. Both forced and automatic DPF regenerations rely on fuel dosing into the exhaust to achieve the extremely high exhaust temperatures needed to effectively complete a regen and keep the DPF in working order. Passive regenerations happen automatically when the engine is operating at high enough load to achieve the high exhaust temperature needed. No extra fuel dosing is used for a passive regeneration. Unfortunately, passive regions only can be achieved when the engine is working hard for long durations. Stop and go city traffic is not enough. Automatically activated and forced regions are needed to keep up with the soot caught in the DPF. During this process, fuel is injected into the exhaust system using one of two different methods. The first method injects fuel straight into the exhaust system using what is called the after-treatment fuel doser valve or the seventh fuel injector, located between the turbo and the DOC. The, the sec second method is called post-combustion injection. The seventh fuel injector will not be needed. Post-combustion injection uses the engine fuel injectors. Fuel is injected straight into the piston cylinders during the exhaust stroke, expelling unburnt raw fuel from the cylinders into the exhaust system. The raw fuel entering the exhaust system is critical the fuel is needed to raise the DPF temperature high enough to incinerate the soot into ash and complete a DPF regeneration. Some may wonder about the cost of these systems. They can easily add more than several thousand dollars to the price of a truck. How could it be worth it? The cost of exhaust after treatment systems are not cheap and come with some drawbacks, such as higher maintenance, lower fuel mileage, horsepower and torque decrease. Overall, a shorter life for the engine with higher operating costs that is just to list a few. I know this is hard to listen to. The investment pays off in reduced emissions and compliance with environmental regulations. Could you remove the EGR, SCR and DPF systems? Some might consider deleting or bypassing the after-treatment systems for improved performance or to save on maintenance costs. However, this can lead to increased emissions and fines for non-compliance with regulations. Also, the possible fines if caught, plus cost of replacing the after-treatment components, will increase the operating costs exponentially. The exhaust after treatment system not only protects the environment, but also ensures you're following the law. It may also keep you from an unwanted run-in with the boys in blue.
Keep in mind, it is the right thing to do. Exhaust after treatment will help keep our planet safe from greenhouse gases and other pollutants. We only have one planet Earth. We all need to remember Mars won't be terraformed in our lifetimes. Diesel versus gasoline engines. Which engine is better for the environment? The answer might surprise you. Believe it or not, when you compare the exhaust of a modern diesel truck to that of a gasoline engines, diesel engines often come out on top. With advanced exhaust systems in place, the emissions are much cleaner, making them more environmentally friendly. So there you have it. Modern diesel engines equipped with exhaust after treatment systems are much cleaner than you might think. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. What's your take on diesel technology? Thanks for watching and see you next time. If you found this information helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more truck stuff.